Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use one VCA fader to automate the entire band in your mix. If you are well versed in using VCAs and you use them all the time, this probably isn't the video for you. However, if you've never really ventured into them, either because you don't quite understand them or you're not sure of a good application for a VCA fader, this video is for you. So real quickly, what is a VCA? It stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. Who cares about that? It is like a remote control fader for other faders. So I can take any group of faders in my mix and I can assign them to this extra fader on the far right hand side of my mix. This fader will show up red. It's a red fader, which it just looks cool. And then as I move this fader, all these other faders move with it. They maintain their relative levels. So, you know, if there's a fader here and a fader here, like a fader up here, a fader down here, as I move, if they're both linked to the VCA fader, as I move this, they move together too. So what's the use of that? Well, very simple use is you can just use it to turn everything down without having to select all the tracks and pull them down. That's a, that's, that's a use case. I've done that a couple of times when doing like gain staging early in the mix. Um, but what's cool about a VCA fader is it can move the faders, but they still maintain any automation that was present on the faders. So keep that in mind. But that's actually not what I want to talk about today. Today, I want to use the VCA fader to turn down the instruments in the band or up and then automate that to happen automatically using just a single VCA. So let me show you how that works. Okay, here's a mix in Studio One. At verse one, a few bars in, the guitars play this wow wow part. And I want to emphasize that on all the instruments. So drums, bass, and guitars, I want that to be a little more exaggerated. One option is I could come in and I could automate the drum bus, and then I could automate the bass bus, and I could automate the guitar bus to go up and down or automate each individual channel. But why do all that when I could just do it once? So here's what that sounds like, and then I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So it's just that one part. There are a couple of extra guitars that come in. They accentuate it. But let's say, I think that's probably fairly good, but let's say we wanted to bring that out even more and really surprise the listener. I've got the vocals muted right now so we can just focus on the instruments. Here's how I would set that up. Let's open up our mixer. And for the sake of making things look a little more clear, let me just show you the, the things that I'm going to control and get rid of all the extra stuff in this mix. Uh, so let's do this. If I just click and drag here, it'll get rid of everything. Uh, we'll show the drums bus. We'll show the bass bus because there's a couple of bass uh, tracks. And we'll show the electric guitar bus. So these are the three things that I want to control. Drums, bass, and electrics. You can see there's signal there. Okay. I want all of these to go up just a little, just a, just a nudge, just a smidge at that wow wow part. And the way I'm going to do that is click the first one, hold down shift, click the last one. I'm going to right click and choose add VCA for selected channels. Now the way I have this set up in my mix in these options here is all my VCA channels stay to the right. Uh, you can have that happen with your effects channels and your bus channels. I usually keep these unchecked. I keep this one checked because I'm only using VCAs in very specific scenarios. It's not an every mix kind of thing. But now that I have this here, I can rename it to something like band. And a couple of things to note. It's a VCA channel, which means there's no plugins here. We're not running signal through this channel. It's literally a remote control. We can see which channels we're controlling by clicking this. We can see that those are feeding into this. And we can also see which uh, if you have multiple VCAs, you'll see once you have it routed to a VCA and you change the name, it'll show up down here in this little label that shows me that these are each feeding that VCA. So I can remove it from there or add it back. They're all selected right now. Um, so if you, if you add them all to one but you realize you shouldn't have added this one or you forgot to add this one, you can still add it by doing this. So now I've got all these faders going to or being controlled by, more accurately, this VCA fader here. See, isn't it cool? It's red. So now watch what happens when I move this fader. See? They're all going to move relative to this fader. They still maintain the balance where the bass is a little louder than the drums and the guitars are a little quieter than both. And it's going to maintain that relative level. So now I can literally do something like this. <laughs> 
and everything's going to move with this fader. So the next thing, you probably saw this one coming, I can right click on this and choose edit automation for that. If we open up our editor, we'll see now we have an automation lane for this VCA. And now I can automate that wow wow right here. So we could do something like, let's just put it into touch mode. And I'm just going to push the fader up at that section. Here we go. Simple as that. Or let me try it one more time. I'm going to let go and it'll go right back to zero. And we can go in and say, okay, that was cool. That might be a little much and I want it to come back down before that downbeat. So I'll drag that automation back and maybe we'll say, mm, let's turn all of you down just a little bit. Maybe that was a little little too exaggerated. It's just like any other automation point inside of Studio One. I can really tweak it however I want. But now I've got this thing happening. I can switch it back to read mode where in this section, watch the faders move. So that's a very kind of obvious example of what you can do here, probably over the top, probably too much. But you can see how that could be really useful if you need to get into a chorus and it's not quite lifting like you want it to. You can automate all your instruments to go up just a little bit. Now you could also automate the master fader, but here I only want to automate the instruments up. I don't want to mess with the vocal. It's sitting just right. Uh, or maybe I do this on just drums and bass where I want them a little bit louder in the chorus than everywhere else. I can do that using a simple VCA fader. And now, e even though these are being controlled by this, I can still come in and adjust the relative volume between the two. So maybe I decide, you know what, those guitars are a little too loud still. I can bring the guitar bus down, but they're still gonna all follow this VCA fader. Even if I bring it down to some crazy level. Right, it, they're still gonna follow. So I have this automation written, but I can still adjust the volumes here, which is really cool. Because as you might know, if I adjust the, if I put automation on this guitar bus, for example, now I can never move this fader again because it's locked in to wherever the the written automation is for that channel. So if I want to move it, I've got to go redo the automation. Here's a cool way to get around that. Uh, and also you get to use a cool red fader, so that's cool. If you've never used VCA faders before, I understand. I was kind of the same way when they first hit Studio One. I thought, I, I don't have a use for that. Turns out there are a lot of really cool uses. If you've never done it before, go try this and come back and leave a comment and let us know how it worked. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.